Hey everyone, welcome again to another video from Art of Wellbeing. So this time I'm going to share with you my little adventure in creating this altar tunnel book. Something totally new and adventurous for me, but something so enjoyable. So a few of the supplies that I'll be using for this project are of course an old book. I love this one. It's got brown pages, brown edges, hardcover. So you take whatever you have on hand. You'll need some scissors, a cutter, a glue stick, and I used an ink pen. And then I also used a piece of very thick cardboard. That way I can use it for my cutter to cut on top. And of course, some beautiful pictures, flowers, birds, and leaves. So I'm taking the center of my book, opening it right to the middle, and I'm going to take my glue stick and just put glue all over one side of the page. So I love using a glue stick because it doesn't wrinkle the pages. And then the one in front I just push down like to put two pages together because it kind of thickens the pages, makes it a little bit more sturdy as I cut and create through the pages. So here's my second one. I might do two or three. Well, here's my third one. So you just want to make sure that you have glue covering the page fully because you don't know where you're going to cut. So I have one, two, three, four. I think that's a good amount. Of course, if you want to do however, you can do whatever you want, however many you want. I just want it to be a little surprise. So I'm not going to do the full book. And then I'm going to take my first page and put my cardboard underneath it. And I'm going to draw a shape that I want to cut out. So I think I'm going to start small this time. Just make a small circle shape. And then I'm taking my cutter and I'm just following the lines. I really don't think it has to be perfect because I'm going to be covering over most of it. So I'm just pushing hard here. Any little spots I've missed. And then I'm going to do the same with the next page, putting it under the page that I'm going to cut. So I'm gonna just draw that circle shape and this time I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And again, I cut through that. So make sure your cardboard is thick enough to cut through so it doesn't cut through your book pages. And again, I'm continuing the same process, each time making my shape or my oval a little bit bigger, a little bit different shape. So really, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You can make any shape you want. So I think I have my four pages cut out. I might just put a white paper behind, that way it keeps it from being so cluttered in the back. I don't know, I'm just trying this out. I'm just going with the flow here, seeing what I get inspired with. I like the white the contrast that it gives. 
So now I'm going to cut out my papers, my pictures, some of the flowers and leaves that I have. So if you're joining me for this project, you can do any pictures that you have on hand. Sometimes I use magazines. This time I printed some out. Kind of the same color schemes. I tried to find some vintage pictures, vintage flowers, just to go with my old book. Now that I have them all cut up, I'm just laying them out so I can have a general idea of all the ones that I have. And I'm going to just start with the smaller shape cut out. And I'm just going to glue a few around my circle. So this is where I play and have fun, just try things out, see what I like, what calls out to me. So this is what I love about <laughs> these art projects and this is why I've included so many in this art of well-being to me. Doing something artsy and something creative is such a benefit to my well-being. It makes me happy, it lights me up, it kind of brings me peace and calm. It's my alone time. So I think it's important to find what it is that lights us up, what is that happy place for us, and take the time to do that. So I don't get time every day, but when I have a little extra moment, I do make sure I do some crafting or journaling or art or cutouts, anything that's different, new, and that challenges me in some way. This is also part of growth. So after I add a few of my own doodles to personalize it, I also bring in some colors with some color pencils. I try to match the pinks from the flowers. And some greens from the leaves. So really an altered book is anything that you want to add to it. I started out just with some pictures and then I got inspired to doodle a few more leaves and dots and a circle around the shape. I think it looks quite nice. And now moving on to my second one. I kind of like the pictures to kind of poke out from the previous page. And then I glue it quite soon after I've chosen some pictures. Otherwise I analyze it too much and I have a hard time making decisions. I use a thicker marker for the outside of the circle and then I use a thinner pen for drawing the leaves and doodles around my flowers. This is my little way to personalize it. I mean, this is really a new project for me. I don't remember what gave me the idea, but I think I saw it somewhere on somebody else's channel. I'm like, hey, I'm going to make my own. I decided not to look at anybody else's. I'm just going to go with what flows from within. I think there's that little aspect of adventure and surprise when we just do what suits us. So this is really playtime for me. I'm choosing my pictures, beautiful pictures, beautiful colors, beautiful nature. No wonder it's so relaxing and soothing. Now for this one, I think I'm going to make the bird on a branch. 
So I think you have the choice to fill up the page as much as you want or as little as you want. That's the wonderful thing about this project. Every altered page is different. Nothing needs to have perfect rhyme or reason either. Nothing in nature is totally perfect either, but it's beautiful. It just, it's just the way it needs to be. So just think of your art that way. It's just as it needs to be. I tend to doubt my work and when I look at others' work, I really compare with others. Why is mine not as good as theirs? And so I take little pauses. Actually, I take long pauses, sometimes a month or two of just being off social media because that way I can, can create from the heart. I can create for my own well-being. Not create because I feel I need to keep up with uh, everybody else or um, with what's out there. I know it's fun to have little creative artsy challenges, but somehow, some way, I try to follow my heart and see where that takes me. Not somebody else's plan or program for me. Oh, I'm going to add some little berries here because there's plenty of berries on the picture. So I'm going to add some drawings. So as you can see, some pages are more empty and some are very full. Now I think this is the last one. I want to add in a butterfly somewhere here. So there's plenty of options, plenty of choices. Sometimes I have to stop myself and <laughs> say, okay, that's enough. Sometimes leaving empty spaces is also a chance to imagine what it could be like placing a white here because it not only protects the other side of the page but it also helps me see a little clearer what it ends up being. And for this project I decided not to analyze it too much, not to plan it out. I didn't have any pages planned. Sometimes if I analyze it or figure it out too much, it doesn't happen. <laughs> and I stop myself from even starting. So I figured, okay, I'm just going to start with the materials I have, with the paper I have. I had here one sheet of paper. Instead of using white, I decided to use this. It's got a little polka dot pattern. So I thought this could be fun and it's still light enough to write something in it, which is what I want to do. With all my art projects, I put something meaningful that I want to refer back to. That's kind of like the well-being of my art. It's those little treasured moments that I look back to, refer back to, to get inspired, to get encouraged. Because I often add in those little things that I'm going through at the moment or little life lessons that I'm learning. It brings me back in time to those little souvenirs or those treasured moments. Sometimes it's challenges and difficulties, but I know that they're all for a purpose too. Sometimes my best work comes from those difficult moments. 
and often for me doing a piece of art, creating something, even something totally new and different, even something unperfect, imperfect, is what kind of sets things in motion for the next thing, the next idea, the next inspiration. So I found it so important to just follow the flow, listen to my heart, listen to my intuition. And after creating this page, I got inspired to write a few little quotes of the moment, things that I'm learning. So I decided to write in this page, in this box, attention is the attitude that makes us not look away, not reason away, not talk away, but that lets be what is. There's a joy and calm in doing one thing at a time. That's the best use of my time. So there we have it. Here I'm going to just sign it. There we have a little surprise in a book. Some of the quotes I've included are Doing one thing at a time is what helps us to enjoy more of life's simple pleasures, what brings peace and true fulfillment. I ask myself, what do I gain when I slow down and focus on one thing at a time? Focus is calming. How enjoyable it is to sometimes do nothing at all. Nothing at all. It's not always an easy thing to learn or to do. But there are so many benefits to that. I'm learning to just enjoy the here and now. That's what this little tunnel book, altered book, is all about for me. A gentle, loving reminder for my well-being. Enjoying, doing, crafting, one thing at a time.